In our first learning goal for today, we'll need to tell whether the given value is the solution of the inequality. Instead of writing 37 plus x, we're going to replace this x, that means substituting 27 in for x. This is going to give us 37 plus 27, which is 64. And 64 is not less than or equal to 54, so 27 is not a solution of the inequality. In our second learning goal, we'll solve the inequality and then graph the solution. The first thing I'm going to use when I see variables on my right hand side, I'm going to use the symmetric property. Notice that the inequality symbol is pointing to the S. When I use the symmetric property, I need to make sure I reverse my inequality symbol so that it is still pointing to the S. Now what undoes subtraction? Addition. 12.7 plus 5.3 is 18.0, which is the same thing as 18. When I graph it, since I have an equal to sign, I'm going to have a closed circle. The inequality symbol is pointing to the left. So remember, S is less than, left means less, and we're going to our left. By the end of this lesson, I'll be able to use addition or subtraction to solve inequalities. Use a number line to graph the solution set of inequality. It sends a question. How can you use addition or subtraction to solve an inequality? Tell whether the given value is a solution of the inequality. In this particular case, we're going to substitute the value for y in for y. We have 8 is greater than or equal to 5 minus 2. Since we don't have a number in front of the 5, we just have to write 5 minus 2. Sometimes you might have a number like 3. Now we have to multiply 3 times 5, which will give us 15. But in this case, we just have to say, what's 5 minus 2? Well, it's 3. And 8 is greater than or equal to 3. So therefore, 5 is a solution of the inequality. Let's take a look at the next example. In this particular case, we're going to substitute 3 in for m. 3 plus 4.2 is 7.2. A number cannot be less than or greater than itself. Therefore, 7.2 is not less than 7.2. So 3 is not a solution of the inequality. If we replace the inequality symbol with less than or equal to, now it would be a true statement. 3 is a solution of the inequality. But in our case, it didn't have the equal to, so it's not a solution. Let's take a look at an example with a fraction. We're going to substitute 7 twelfths for g. Now we have 1 third plus 7 twelfths. In order to add fractions, we have to have like denominators. So let's find the lowest common denominator. We'll take our two denominators. What number goes into both 3 and 12? That would be 3. 3 goes into 3 one time, and 3 goes into 12 four times. We're going to multiply the fraction with a denominator 3, top and bottom by 4, and the fraction with a denominator 12, top and bottom by 1. This gives us an LCD of 12, and we have 4 plus 7 over 12, which is equal to 11 twelfths. Now we need to know whether 11 twelfths is actually greater than 3 fourths. One way of doing this is to cross multiply. 4 times 11 is 44. 12 times 3 is 36. Since 44 is greater than 36, 11 twelfths is also greater than 3 fourths. Another way that we could have did this is by visually expecting it. When we have 11 twelfths, we're only missing one small sliver, one small slice. When we see 3 fourths, we're missing one slice, but it's a much larger slice. So therefore, you can see we have more in the yellow than in the green. I'll overlap them so you can see it a little bit better. The yellow, that we have two extra slices, two twelfths more. We can see that the yellow covers more space, has a larger area. Therefore, 7 twelfths is a solution of the inequality. The process of solving inequalities is much like solving equations. To solve equations and inequalities, you need to isolate the variable using properties and inverse operations. At each step, you will create an equation or inequality that is equivalent to the original equation or inequality. Equivalent inequalities have the same solution set. Let's solve this particular inequality and graph the solution. The first thing you should see is that the variable is on the right side. Therefore, I'm going to use the symmetric property. I'm going to slide the y minus 2 to the left side and then the 8 to the right side. My inequality symbol is pointing to my y. Therefore, my inequality symbol needs to be reversed to ensure that it's still in the proper direction, pointing to the y. What undoes subtraction? The inverse of subtraction is addition. We'll add 2 to both sides, leaving us with y is less than or equal to 10. Since we have an equal to sign, that means 10 is part of the solution set. So therefore, we're going to use a closed circle. The inequality symbol is facing to the left. 
Therefore, our arrow should be pointing to the left direction as well. Make sure you bold this particular arrow. Compared to this one, you can see the difference. This one's bold, that one's not. When you think of less than, you should think of left, or left means less. Now we can check this, okay, to see if our solution set is reasonable. When we check the equations, we would check to see if our solution is correct. In this case, we're checking to see if our answer or our solution is reasonable. 10 is part of the solution, so we can use 10 if we wanted to, but I always like to use one that's further along. We can use 9.9, .9, we can use 9, 8, and so forth. I'm going to use 6. I'm going to substitute the 6 for y. 6 minus 2 is 4, and 8 is in fact greater than or equal to 4. So therefore, our solution is reasonable. We can still have a mistake, but at least we know our answer makes sense. Let's take a look at the next example. Since my variable is on the right-hand side, I'm going to use a symmetric property. The inequality symbol is pointing to the 7.2, and it continues to point to the 7.2 because I reversed it. What undoes addition? Subtraction. I'll subtract 4.2 from both sides, leaving me with m on the left-hand side is greater than 3.0. 3.0 is the same as 3. Since I don't have that equal to sign, I'm going to use an open circle, and I'm going to my right, 3. This means that 3 is not part of the solution set. It's any number greater than 3, like 3.1 or 3.2 or even like 3.000001. For checking, we can pick any number to the right of 3. I'm choosing to use 5. We're going to substitute 5 in for m. 5 plus 4.2 is a total of 9.2. 7.2 is in fact less than 9.2, so therefore our solution is reasonable. And let's take a look at the last example. So in this particular case, you must think of this as a positive one-third. To undo this positive one-third, to cancel it out, we have to subtract one-third from both sides. On the left-hand side, we'll be left with just g is greater than, and in order to add or subtract fractions, we need to have like denominators. What number goes into both 4 and 3? Well, that's 1. 1 goes into 4, 4 times, and 1 goes into 3, 3 times. We're going to multiply the fraction with a denominator of 4, top and bottom, by 3, and the fraction with a denominator of 3, top and bottom, by 4. 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths gives me a total of 5 twelfths. In order to graph fractions, we have to first determine between what two integers does 5 twelfths lie between. In this particular case, the two integers are 0 and 1. When we graph, we're going to have an open circle in between. Now, if you put it exactly in the middle, that would be fine. 5 twelfths is about 0 0.5. It's approximately 0 0.416666, and it continues forever. We're just estimating. We don't have to be exact. So since it's really close, you can have it exactly in the middle. I put it slightly closer to 0, but if you put it exactly in the middle, it would be fine. And we're going to our right. And when we're checking, we could pick any number greater than 5 twelfths. So we could pick 6 twelfths, which is a half if we wanted to, or pick 1, 2, 3, or so forth. I chose to pick 2 because I know 1 third plus 2 is just 2 and 1 third. And 2 and 1 third, I can see that it's greater than 3 fourths. Therefore, my answer, g is greater than 5 twelfths, makes sense. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.